Joshua chapter 1, verses 1 to 11. After the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, the Lord said to Joshua, son of Nun, Moses 8, Moses, my servant, is dead. Now then, you and all these people get ready to cross the Jordan River into the land I am about to give to them, to the Israelites. I will give you every place where you set your foot, as I promised Moses. Your territory will extend from the desert to Lebanon, and from the great river the Euphrates, all the Hittite country, to the Mediterranean Sea in the west. No one will be able to stand against you all the days of your life. As I was with Moses, so I will be with you. I will never leave you nor forsake you. Be strong and courageous, because you will lead these people to inherit the land I swore to their ancestors to give to them. Be strong and very courageous. Be careful to obey all the law my servant Moses gave you. Do not turn from it to the right or to the left, that you may be successful wherever you go. Keep this book of the law always on your lips. Meditate on it day and night, so that you may be careful to do everything written in it. Then you will be prosperous and successful. Have I not commanded you, be strong and courageous? Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged, for the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. So Joshua ordered the, uh, the officers of the people, go through the camp and tell the people, get your provisions ready. Three days from now you will cross the Jordan here to go in and take possession of the land the Lord your God is giving you for your land. Your land. Thank you, Rito. I just said that I went to a new house with my family, so it's just, you know, we went to, uh, I forgot the name, yeah, one more, the name of the beach? Harbour, Harbour Boat. Harbour Boat. Uh, yeah, Otago, ah, Otago Beach, you know, uh, yeah, with my family, the first time, to, for one year, so I, I went, when they would enjoy there, and also, you know, I interviewed with my friend, my good friend, who, whose name is Glenn Devish. He's a senior pastor in um, uh, Cardiff Halifax Church. So he invited me uh, to interview with him. So it was a good time. So let's watch the video. So we are, we are preaching all evangelism. So we're going to watch this video and then what he uh, thought, thought of, you know, uh, 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 evangelist. So let's watch it together. Good to see you here. Um, uh, thank you for having me here. Okay. Uh, uh, welcome to Carter Vice Baptist Church. <laughs> okay. Uh, you know, first tell me about your family for you. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm married to, to Rachel and we have uh, four daughters. And, uh, yeah, between four and eleven. So, uh, they're fine. Yeah, we have a friend in morning comes you so Yes, yes. Since since morning spent what was it, two years on yeah, site? Right, yeah. Um living across the way from one another. Okay. That's right. Yeah. The last question is please tell me about and then uh, evangelism. What do you think? Evangelism. Yeah, what what do I think of evangelism yeah. or what I, and then what Yeah, I think I think it's it's something where like it's obviously what what God has called us to do and uh, it's essential for our mission. Um, without it, the, the, the church will die. But I think it's something that we're often going to continue to consider how it looks different, you know, as seasons change. And uh, this year has certainly been a very, very different context to previously. Uh, one of the, the thoughts uh, had recently around evangelism that was different to before uh, was in relation to pastoral care. You know, so that it's often not, we don't think pastoral care, evangelism, you know, that those two things go together. Um, but it came about uh, when we had a pastoral care meeting and we've got all these people on this, you know, in our church of, of this is who's looking now for this person, all that kind of thing. And I said, what about the people not on this list? You know, that the people that are, that are out there and around and so on. Um, and so trying to provide pastoral 
medical care outside as a way of actually evangelizing. So um, the thought with that was then to actually uh, send them a, a letter saying, hey, how are you going? Um, you know, crazy, basically crazy year, uh, but we're here. And if you need anything, um, uh, we're praying for you. If you need it, if you want to have any chat, um, any of those type of ideas of then, um, so setting that, and then actually going around, um, dropping it in everyone's uh, letterbox, and then actually doing a door knock, not to actually start, you know, trying to, you know, um, uh, preach the gospel to them, but actually just follow up, and then say uh, in the follow up, uh, is there something that you specifically want us to be praying about? What do you not want us to be praying? And respect how people, you know, respond. So I did something similar to that last year, no, not last year, the year before, um, when I was still in Boat Harbour. Uh, but the context was, was different. And, and yeah, it's amazing what people open up and share, but Absolutely. pastoral care and evangelism can work together. Oh, great. Thank you. Thank you very much. My pleasure. Thank you. Uh, hello, it's good to see you here. Uh, wow. Thank you for having me here. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, welcome to Carl. Thank you. <laughs> so, you you watch this video, and then what, what do you think? So, what do you, what, what do you learn? So, what do you think about evangelism? Anyone who wants to share? What, he, what did he talk about evangelism? During this time, is that, yeah, is it a little different? Yeah? I think, um, yeah, I can see what Glenn's saying, that they marry into each other. Um, because often people will come to faith or think about faith when the chips are down, then life's tough. Yeah, yeah. Whatever they're going through, yeah, it's not necessarily yeah, 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 right. with life. Yeah. And um, mm -hmm. so I can see what he's saying, that mm -hmm. pastoral care and yeah, pastor. evangelism. Yeah, thank you. I think Corinna. And you're listening very well, thank you. Uh, who else? Any hands up there? Any? What do you think of the evangelism? So now it's a, it's a new normal life. So we have to approach others, reach out to uh, a neighbor or a family in different this time. So he he when did he share you know the evangelism? He sent, you know, so sometimes to send the letter to your neighbors. So what they need. And then there is phone number and contact number, uh, contact number and some uh, information. If they need something, they contact church and they contact him, and then the church will be helpful, you know, neighbors. neighbors. So what, what are we going to do? Uh, uh, evangelism. So another, another uh, interview with one of my children. Yeah, you can watch, you know, that. Uh, yesterday when I went, you know, the uh, uh, beach, you know, we just, you know, that spend time just in a, with one hour and in the beach but I interviewed with the one winner of my children so they they did evangelize actually two but I didn't find one so another one so we can watch now so yeah Joseph on oh, yeah your turn thank you Joseph how are you okay so we're So please give me a, bit, you know, a big 
glad to know that Joseph is glad. Thank you. So my story, I forgot you know, that, uh, you know, to bring in you know, the video. Uh, Joy also uh, talk uh, over phone, maybe text, and then uh, Joy you know, reach out to you know, her friend, and then uh, now it's a hard time, but there will be God's timing to uh, uh, to let them know who Jesus Christ is. Yeah, so this is important. Thank you. Thank you for your heart, and thank you for your heart as well. So now it's a good time to think about your neighbor, friend, and your family as well. But I know that there is in the work of the absolute should be uh, should have the work of the Holy Spirit. So we can ask God to lead. What what we can do is to plant the seed, and then God made them grow. Amen. So all we can do is to plant the seed, sow the seed. Okay. So do you remember last week? Some anyone who remember last week. Who came to church yet yeah, yeah, last week? Yeah. And yeah, Tess? Yeah, who came to church last week? Yeah, yeah, thank you, thank you, Tess, thank you. <laughs> so yeah, yeah, Principal Rose, who uh, from is a morning college, he came to church and preach on the gospel. So gospel. So he talks about um, gospel is God's gospel. The gospel, the message about Jesus is history. The gospel saves me from my sin and begins my personal transformation. Lastly, he brought the last point. The gospel is unity. Sometimes you can write down if you want. You can take note to remember. And then you can read again and then meditate on God's word again. Read over and over and you can apply it to your life. That is our Christian life. That is very important as Christian. So you can think about even though you go back home and you can open your, you know, your note and then you can read again. That is important. Now it's prayer time. It's important. It's okay. Uh, uh, now it's just one minute. Take up uh, uh, one minute. Please, if you if you okay, please close your eyes and close your eyes, please, and then pray, pray for your neighbors, your family, your children, and your co-worker. So let's pray together. Just one minute.
I want to remember you, uh, remind you, as you know that we are preached on, today is the fifth one, you know, fifth evangelist we are preaching. So what is the first one? We have to draw. Next, we have to know each other, know neighbor, know your husband and wife. You spend time listening to your husband and wife, listen to the neighbor, listen to your children, what they like. What you know? What is their you know, love language? Is, love language. You can spend time knowing and what is the third one? <laughs> and sowing, planting the seed. You know, Paul and Apollo plant. You know, so Paul said, "I plant the seed, and Apollo I water it, and God made it grow." This is principle, five principles. What is the next one? Growing with partnership. I work with you. I work with our ladies. Ladies work with you, church family. We have good partnership. We have good partnership with Baptist Association. We have good partnership with, with mission organization. We have good partnership with morning college. And next one? Last one? Showing up. Declare changes, share changes with others. The last week, Foundation for Life and Ministry. After service, we spend time uh, in my place and we can spend time uh, to talk uh, with him. That's very good. Yeah. Today, the title is on Evangelism series, number five, fifth one, God's Word and Evangelism. How to relate each other. When you think about God's Word and Evangelism, let's Go together. So today I more, you know, taught you the more deeply. So many people read the Bible. Eh? Have you uh, read the Bible? You know, last week, everyone. Have you eaten? You know, spiritual food last week. Otherwise, you will be hungry. Now is good time to listen to God's word and you know, eat. Uh, today I'm going to talk here about you know, the evangelism again. God touched my heart, you know, to preach on evangelism these days because many people come back to Jesus and come to faith. Many people know Jesus Christ. One of you know that uh, you know, uh, pe uh, one of you know people who met Jesus Christ recently. I I haven't think I thought of you know the Jesus Christ before before COVID nineteen. Now during COVID-19, I thought about you know, Jesus Christ. I thought about, about you know, the eternal life. It happened in the world. You know that it is one of my pro, uh, prayer points. Donald Trump, who is president in America, he has a coronavirus. Even he has that. So now it's, you know, this, you know, now it's, we, we are living in a good country in Australia, but in America, in Brazil, in, in, in some country, they still have a lot of coronavirus. During this time, they start to think of who Jesus is, who God is. When they read the Bible, God's word, living God, they experience, they met Jesus Christ, who is Savior. They start to think of eternal life, who can save them, only Jesus Christ, who is the Savior. They found, uh, you know, uh, salvation. They, you know, they got salvation. So during this time, many other religions as well, they you know, they come into their life, their religion, and Muslim, and Buddhism, and Jewism, and Hinduism. But our God is the great. Why? Our God is the only Savior. Why? You know, when you read the Bible, in you know, a Bible compared to the Quran, so a Muslim you know, believe the Quran, right? So they have like a scripture. But Quran or you know the Jewish people they read their scripture and Hinduism they, they have got in you know, some uh, book and also you know the Buddhism Buddhists they have got you know their some yeah, book as well. But do you know what difference between our uh, other religion? The Bible talks about resurrection. They have got good saint, good teacher, but there is no story about resurrection. They died like Jesus Christ died, but they didn't rise again. There's a different story. 
So Jesus is gospel. Jesus is center of gospel. Why is it important during this time? Because Jesus, as only Savior, can help them and especially give them eternal life. Amen. Today, when you meet in our people, we have time to talk about maybe church, Christianity, Jesus, and what the Bible says about present issue. Someone asked us, you know, what does the Bible talk about you know, heart issue, suffering, and co- even coronavirus, and disease? So, how can you answer what, you know, what are you going to say today? If we don't know Bible, Bible doesn't talk about coronavirus, but Bible, uh, you know, Bible talks about some disease, some hardship, some suffering. If you know the Bible, God's word, if you meditate on God's word over and over, meditating on God's word means more, you know, read God's word more deeply, and then you know God's word by living His word with the testimony. With taste of God, and you can you can explain to them, and then they know who God is. They know who Jesus is. Today, I more you know that uh, bring you know that more you know deep uh, Christian. Every many people read the Bible, but I bring concept of meditating on God's word. Have you heard of the meditation? Christian meditation. Christian biblical meditation. Uh, many people is a, they they are meditating a different. So meditation, the word meditation. We read the Bible, but more is in it. Uh, many things means uh, read the Bible more deeply with the meaning of the Bible, meaning of God's word. Comes from the Latin word meditare, which has a range of meaning including to reflect on, to study, and to practice. Christian meditation is the process of focusing on specific thought by the passage and reflecting on their meaning in the context of the love of God. That is Christian meditation. I want to say again, Christian meditation is the process of focusing on specific Bible passage and reflect on their meaning. We have to think about meaning in the context of God. When you read the book of Joshua today, what is context? What is the meaning of God's word? Verse 1 to 11. For example, when you read verse 6, you know, be strong and courageous. Why did God say to Moses, I'm sorry, it's Joshua? We have to think about meaning of verse. And then we can read the differently rather than you know read you know the quickly. So meditation, Christian meditation is still different from other meditation. The first folder that is can you guess what? Huh. Yeah, Buddhist meditation. Oh. They also meditate every day. Every day. And also you know, the, the bottom that is you know New Age meditation. Oh. And then on the right, is it right? right? What is it? Can Yo- you guess what? Yoga. Yoga meditation. So many people, they meditate you know, differently. But Christian meditation is different. The so secular meditation is associated with emptying the mind. Emptying. Emptying the mind. And with the music, emptying the mind. It is helpful. I'm not denying it is helpful. But it's different. Relaxing our body. But Christian meditation aims to fill the mind with the thought related to biblical passage. I want to say again, Christian meditation aims to fill the mind with God's word, the meaning of Bible passage, Bible verse, what God talked to us. It's not just emptying our inner mind and, and relaxing our body. It's not like that. Christian meditation. Meditation is different. 
Krishna meditation aims to fill the mind with God's word. Mm -hmm. So while meditating God's word, you can talk to God. Mm -hmm. And then you can think of a meaning of verse. You can think of a meaning of words, some words. You think about why did God say like this? What is context? Who are there? Moses and Joshua to the passage. Why did God say to them, you know, Joshua? Because God encouraged Joshua to cross the Jordan River to enter Canaan because this is a promised land. You can think of a previous chapter and the passage, the chapter as well. It's a lot of work, isn't it? So you spend time, maybe one chapter, rather than well, chapter about one to five. Mm -hmm. You can read one chapter very deeply, in detail, thinking about you know, meaning of the verse, and of the thinking of the asking by asking God, you can find why God say like that. God says it like that. What God is speaking to me during reading time. That is important. That's why I bring the Christian meditation today. Think about it. Look at today's passage. Look at today's passage. After Moses passed away, as a read up, read the verse, Joshua, the leader for the next generation, listened to God's word. God commanded Joshua to take <coughs> God's people to enter Canaan. And then God, in verse 8, said, Keep. This book of the law raised on your lips. If you want, as you can turn up in, a, in an open Bible. Keep this book of the law raised on your lips. Meditate on it day and night. Because his people, you and I, we are affected by war. This is a post Christianism. They deny absolute truth God. So now that we are living is a very you know, that. Uh, difficult uh, in a period at the moment. Not not you know that you know like it's more uh, you know physically, but what I'm saying is spiritually we are living in a difficult period at the moment. Keep this book of the law raised on your lips. Meditate on in day and night. That's why I want to parents you know that I teach them children to memorize such words. For example, Joshua chapter. Uh, one to six, be strong and be courageous. And also Joshua chapter uh, one verse eight, keep this book of the law always on your lips. Meditate on it day and night, so that you may be careful to do everything written in it, that you will be prosperous and successful. And teach them to memorize. Because don't forget. When you when they go outside, still remember you know, in their mind and in their it reminds them what God's word is. He said, God said that to succeed, Joshua must be strong and courageous because the task ahead would be not be easy. Obey God's law and lastly, constantly read and study the book of instruction, which means God's word. To be successful, follow God's word to Joshua, you may not succeed by the word standard, but you will be success in God's eyes, and his opinion is most important. So he may not succeed by world standard, but by God's word. Dear brothers, this is the way of, we are following. That's why we have to eat everyday spiritual food, which is God's word. But more deeply, I want to touch you, challenge you. We need to read the Bible by meditating on His word day and night, which means more deeply. Think about many of the words. What God is speaking to me by prayer. We ask the Holy Spirit to make you understand. The more proactively, more actively, we need to read the Bible. It is meditate on God's word. Be careful to do everything written in it. So when you read the uh, 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 book of Joshua chapter 1 verse 8, God talks us, 
Be careful to do everything written in it means that it is an action, action, requirement by obedience. Many people read the Bible, come to church, but without action, without application to your life, it will be nothing ever in your life. So to kind of Christian, it doesn't matter you know, how long you attend the church, you know, how many years you attend the church. It, it matters you apply to your life with God's word. And you may have a lot of testimony with God's word because you live by His word every day. So for example, when I uh, meditate on God's word, uh, David uh, talked to me, be strong and courageous. Meditate on you and my word every day, day and night. So whenever I face some issue, God reminded me the book of Joshua, verse 1 to 6 to 9, three times be strong and courageous. It touched my heart to be strong and courageous. All anxiety, all stress is gone suddenly because of God's word. Because I, I trust God's word and then God's word work to me. God worked to me and then all anxiety, worry is gone. But I'm a human being. And then it's just, so, you know, maybe a couple. Maybe a few, maybe a couple of minutes, hours later, maybe another anxiety come, but God's word walked to me when I trust His word. When I live by His word, when you live by His word, you know, God work, God's word, God's word, yeah, God's word is, is amazing to you. There are five steps to meditate on God's word today. Let's think about it. That is important. One, one day maybe I print out to you uh, and I give it to you. So let's think about today. Five steps to meditate on His Word. So, what is the first one? Find a quiet place. Many people say, you know, they fail to find a quiet place because mm -hmm. maybe for me, I have three children. So, sometimes, you know, when I read the Bible, maybe, you know, sometimes they're noisy or something like that. But you need to find a quiet place. It could be maybe one room, or could it be, you know, that backyard. It could be for any place where you focus on, you know, reading Bible. Okay? Can you imagine that? When you go to the, you know, that, uh, you know, you know, soccer stadium, can you read the Bible there? Yeah, you can read the Bible. <laughs> Find the quiet place. What is the second one? Read the Bible. You know what? Even though many Christians don't read the Bible, this is a bestseller. You know? I keep encouraging you to eat spiritual food. We are affected by the world because Satan attacks us. So there is, yeah, the reason why we read the Bible because by reading His Word deeply, meditating on His Word, we can fight, have a good fight against Satan. That is important. The soul of the Holy, Holy Spirit. Ephesians chapter 6, verse you know, 10 to 12, we know that the Bible, God's word, is a sword of Holy Spirit. Sword of Holy Spirit against Satan. Read the Bible. And third one, pray over the readings. Uh, you know, when you read the Bible, are you praying over the reading? Okay, Lord, please let me understand. I don't understand this one. Please let me understand. You know, God speaks to you sometimes through Holy Spirit. God, you know, that uh, make me understand, make you understand what does it mean? What does it mean by that? For you, for you, everyone. So, you see, the Bible is saying one Bible, but everyone's different. Everyone has a different meaning, sometimes, you know, different you know, application from the uh, Bible. And next one, take note. Someone here don't like take note, it's okay. If it's possible, if you're willing, please. Take note. What, what is the last one? The most important one. Apply the word to your own life. Even the one thing, when you apply to your life every day with the spiritual food, that word, it will be amazing. It will work to you. And then you will see that amazing grace, amazing answer through you know, your action. Action. That is important. Everybody happy with this one? Are you doing this one? Yeah? Anyone who want to share? I'm doing it like this. Yeah? I meditate on God's word like this. 
Action are sign of faith and understanding. Meditating on the Word of God is a practice designed to improve both faith and understanding. Action should be a natural result of effective meditation. Action is important. Please do it. Any question, please let me know. I'll share more on June. Maybe June is good. So find a place. Think about it. Yeah, just think about it. <coughs> so living by God's word. After you meditate on God's word, and then when you live by God's word, and then your life will be encouraging to neighbors to follow you. He said, not easy. Long time ago, oh, believe in Jesus Christ. You can go to eternal life. You can go to heaven. Not like that these days. Through our life, through our good action, after reading, meditating on God's word deeply, God spoke to us. And then we, at that point, we can live out. Live in this world. And many people know who you are. You are Christian. You are children of God. I know you, you are Christian. If you are you are so good Christian, I follow Jesus Christ because you are so rich, because of your behavior, your action, because of your life. Evangelism. Now I'm talking about what? Meditate on God's word. Yeah? I formulated with the concept. And now is our focus evangelism. Evangelism is the commitment to the act of publicly preaching the gospel with the spreading the message teaching of Jesus Christ. Don't think of hard. This is eventually it's not hard. Not typical one. So you can have a good relationship with others. You can make a good relationship and you can share Jesus with us if there is God's timing. Some people may not share but through their action Jesus love many people know they are Christian. They, they believe who God is. So when you read the Bible, evangelism, as you know, you're watching a Glenn, you know, Pastor Glenn. He talks about, you know, that during his time, not, not normal, not, this is different. When he, he talked to me, he sent in a letter to neighbors, let them know who we are, why church images, how can I help them? Listen to them. If they help, we can help them because that's why church exists. So when you read the Bible today, 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 15, but in your heart, reveal Christ as the Lord always be prepared to give an answer to everyone who asks you to give the reason for the hope that you have. So we have to be prepared, right? To give an answer. He will answer to everyone. When some people ask you, we need to be ready. If you don't meditate on God's word deeply, we may not say anything. Oh, sorry, I don't know. We talked to Pastor David. <laughs> Talk to leader. I don't know. So we may say like that. But if you are ready to say something, God will maybe send you non-believer. And you may have opportunity. A Cody. So when they may be Cody, you can be this many non-believer your life. God may give opportunity to share God's word with them. God's word, you know, which you meditate on God's word every day. So you have been meditating, for example, you have been meditating on God's word every day and then you know God deeply, God's word very deeply with your life. And then you may share God's word what you have been living with what you have been living, what you experience God's word, and in God's, God's in the presence of God, you may explain to them. Next one. So Corinthians chapter 5. We are therefore Christ's ambassador. We are what? We are all ambassador for Christ. Amen. So you may be the concept. You are not familiar with ambassador. Huh? Ambassador. Where is the ambassador? Who is the ambassador? And what the ambassador is maybe camera right? <laughs> <laughs> but God called us to be an ambassador, represent of God. So we are represent of Jesus Christ by living His word every day, by meditating on it. 
See, so how can we live by His word? We have to meditate on His word every day, and then we can. When we apply to our life, when we live by His word, we can have a lot of opportunity to share Jesus with others through your good behavior, through God's word. Amen. All right, next one. Mark chapter six and verse fifteen. He said to them, "Go into all the world, preach the gospel to all creation, preach the good news, and share Jesus to all nations." That is important. What? You know, a lot of in the Bible, God's word about evangelism. Can you read this verse? Can you meditate on what Bible says in Mark chapter six and verse fifteen? You may meditate on this verse, only one verse. For whole day, maybe when you have time, what Bible said, what speak to me, what what God is speak to me when I read this Bible. For example, Joy John Joseph, go into all the world, preach the gospel to all creation. Yeah, maybe different. There is a different way of approaching others. Mayan, go into all the world. God bless Mayan. To preach the news, share Jesus with others, and anyway, thank you for bringing your good friend Taki. Thank you. Then you are doing well. Yeah, sounds good. Yeah, doing well. Thank you. Thank you very much. You are doing well. Think about, meditate on this verse, Mark chapter sixteen, verse fifteen. What God is saying to you is not just you know the, just in a letter. He's living God's word. God is speaking to you and encouraging you to apply to your life. Go and make a disciple of all of nations, of all nations. Matthew chapter 20, verse 9 to 20 is our God's vision. And next one, Peter replied, repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus for the forgiveness of your sin and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Bible said, repent is important. Many people are not familiar with repentance, theological repentance. Many people hate their word. But the Bible says, without repentance, you cannot be forgiven by Jesus. When you repent, Jesus will forgive you to follow him. That's why we have to forgive others. Jesus said, just like I forgave others, you have to, you must forgive us. Even though and someone, someone said, even though the mother, even though a thief, even though there's someone who stolen your, your, your property, even, even you know, someone hates you, we have to forgive them. Because what Bible said, repent and be baptized and forgive us. And next one. Sorry, sorry, I said today many Bible verses. Sorry, <laughs> you're doing a great job. For the Son of Man came to seek and to save the lost. For the Son of Man, who is the Son of Man? Jesus Christ came to see and to save the Lord. Who is the lost? The lost. It, maybe your family, your friend, your co-worker in your working area. Have you prayed for them? Have you evangelized to them? Have you evangelized them? Have you cried out for them? For your children, for your husband, for your wife, for neighbors, for you know the co-worker, because they are the lost. They are maybe going well physically or financially, but they're not going well spiritually. There is no eternal life for non-believer. Can you meditate on Luke? Chapter 19, verse 10, and then listen to the voice of the Holy Spirit. What God is speaking to you now, to you individually. We have to listen to and then we can apply to it. Someone may cry out for your children because they are not believer. Someone may even cry for your neighbor, they are not believer. Someone may cry out for someone, those who has got different religion, because God is speaking to me and you. I came to seek and to save the lost. The reason I died on the cross because of the lost. My heart is for lost. 
Could you go and make it easier? Could you go and preach the good news to them in the name of Jesus? Don't worry because I will be with you. I encourage you. Think of your neighbor, your family, because they are the lost. My heart for the lost. I'm looking for the lost. Could you go together? Amen. Your heart is important. The reason I told you a long time ago, we need to have a good soul, good soil. If we have that on the path, our heart is on the path, on the thorn and on the rocky ground. Even though God is speaking to you now, you know, after service, maybe you lost or you forgot all God's word. But today, God, someone who has got good heart, good soil, on good soil, remember God's word. Because God is speaking to you, each one of you, to apply to your life. Amen? Three ways the church can bring the hope of the gospel to neighbor during this time. It's the first one. Invite people to online church service. It's very easy, isn't it? Mm-hmm. Oh, we have an online service. You know? Someone who don't join any uh, church service. So the first one, first group, they want to join in service, but they don't have any online service or well, offline service. Oh, our church has an offline service. Please welcome. Eh? And also, you know, then, uh, let me know if you, you want to share uh, you know, online. This is a link to others. Let me know. And I can send what I can send to you. You can send to others. That's important. You can use online church service or offline service. You can invite people during this time. Online church service. Wherever they live, it doesn't matter. From you know, the Africa, Europe, even you know, maybe you know, you know, Asia, they can watch our services online. And next one, share your message of hope and God's word with people. Uh, last week, I met three people. Oh, it's amazing. I met his uh, next neighbor. His name is Michael. The reason I share because please pray for him. He's not believer. He don't have any religion. He, uh, he, I know that he where he uh, uh, he's working. I spend time with him, listen to him, because of uh, I want to make a good relationship. And I listen to him. I pray for him in my heart. Another name is Victor. He's just you know that uh, also with the dog, and then they spend time. I'm told with my, my children in front of my house. Oh, I listened to him. And then I came out and then I said, hey, hello, hello. And then my name's David. Oh, your name is Victor. And then oh, you know, I'm, I'm from Chesley Baptist. Oh, yes. And then he, he's just, you know, interested in who he is. And he explained when he was Malaysia, he went to church Saturday, Sunday, but not anymore now. Oh, you know, okay. Oh, Victor, we have a service. Sunday, 9.30. Yeah, welcome. Another name is uh, Agum. Agum. You know? Can you guess what? Where uh, where he is from? Agum. <laughs> He's from Bali, you know, Indonesia. He work he work in uh, Newcastle. When I went to Newcastle, I met with him. I say hello. He's very gentle. He talked to me about oh, David. If you have any uh, opportunity to co- you know continue to Bali, let me know, and I can guide you, uh, support you. Wow, he's very gentle and nice. But he. Believe uh, he religion Hinduism, but it's okay. But we respect. I respect his uh, religion. He respects my religion. We spend that uh, maybe twenty minutes. We talk. Then naturally, I pray in my heart. Holy Spirit touches his heart to know Jesus. All they can, we can do, keep in touch with them, contact, have having a relationship with them. One day, they will be God's timing. We plant the seed. God make it go. We trust God. We, if you plant the seed, share with them or gospel or that, now it's up to God. All depends on God's grace, God, God's word, not from me. After we plant the seed, everyone will say, Amen. Amen. That's why we have to plant the seed. Last one, reach out to lonely neighbor. If there is any lonely neighbor, now is a good time. You know? They may open their heart. They really want to meet with people. You can reach out and listen to them. Oh, do you need any help? Or well, do you need any things? Maybe someone may need you know that uh, relationship with you. Maybe. Today, I share with you evangelism. Evangelism. 
evangelism. I brought the first point, meditate on God's word. If you don't meditate on God's word, you may not know God's heart. Not just reading, it's not just reading, but reading his word by prayer, listening to the voice of the Holy Spirit. And when you read the Bible, and each verse, don't skip each verse, you know, read it carefully. You can find the meaning of the verse. You can find the why, you know, God says like that. Who are there? Who are character? Today, like Moses and Joshua, God, God spoke to the Joshua. Why did God speak to Joshua? If it, just like God spoke to Joshua, it is also, this, this beautiful verse is also for me. So listen to his voice. And then, you can, you can evangelize with others. You can share God's word with others. What you learn, what you experience, you know, what you experience, presence of God. If you share a testimony with them, they may come back to Jesus Christ. Use your online service. You invite people and they share your message. Your message will be powerful with God's word, with experience you know, of the presence of God in your life. This is a you know, living testimony and reach out to one new neighbor. And then you, you, you may know more than this one, three. Yeah? Just, you know, I suggest three things. Amen, everyone? Are you with me? God bless you to go and make this disciple differently. Joseph said, Amen, yeah, thank you. And call it God bless you. Yeah? God bless you. Each one of you this week, think of, please meditate on God's word. You can experience God's amazing grace through meditating God's word. And also, you can share the message, what you have experienced with, by meditating on his word. And then we can preach the grace. Maybe you can share Jesus with us. And then we can see God's amazing grace here. Dear brothers and sisters who join our online service, God bless you, each one of you doing this week. God is with you, be strong and courageous by meditating His Word, and then you enjoy His blessings. Let's pray to Him. We are listening a lot of God's Word, God's preaching every Sunday. Why is our behavior? Not changed. Are we listening to the voice of the Holy Spirit? Are, are we applying to our life? Many people have been uh, attending church, become becoming Christian for a long time, more than thirty years, ten years, one years. It doesn't matter how many years we attend the church. It matter how we apply it to our life with God's message. Your Lord. You may bless each one of us to meditate on your word every day and use God's word to preach the good news, share Jesus with others, to follow Jesus Christ. We love you so much. May the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, love of God, fellowship of the Holy Spirit, be with those who meditate on your word and evangelize us. By sharing your word, be with them forever. Amen. God bless you this week. Yeah. Enjoy your life. We are going to quick, you know, first day.